We're very excited about this series. All this week, Reganomics is taking on taxes at the top with a new series that explores the ethical and social implications of making the rich pay more. And today's discussion couldn't come at a more crucial time as House Speaker John Boehner puts Plan B on the table, allowing tax increases for people who earn more than $1 million a year. But there's no deal yet, and it's time for a real debate on how much the top earners need to kick in to keep our debt under control. Control. Joining me in today's Taxes at the Top, Dan Mitchell, Senior Fellow with the Cato Institute, and Michael Linden, Director for Tax and Budget Policy at the Center for American Policy. All right, Dan, beginning with you. I mean, if you said, I am going to take every person in the United States of America that makes more than $1 million and I'm going to tax them more, is it going to make a debt, a dent in our actual debt load? You could confiscate every penny that millionaires make in America and it wouldn't run the country, or at least the federal government, more than a couple of months. And of course, you'd wind up tanking the economy. But it's not just an economic issue, it's a moral issue. I don't think anybody in the country should have to pay more than, say, 25% of their income to government. The problem we have in Washington is under both Bush and Obama, government spending is out of control. And in the future, it's going to get much, much worse because of all the entitlement programs that my friend Mike uh, here in the studio with me supports. That's what we should be trying to fix is government that's too big, not trying to go after the rich and driving them out of the country like we're seeing in France. All right, you brought up a very, very <laughs> interesting issue, though. You said, Dan, you said it's a moral issue. Morally, people should not have to pay the government more than 25% of their income. I have a feeling that morally, Michael absolutely disagrees with you on this front because morally to you, Michael, do you think millionaires, those earning a million bucks a more owe it to the country to pay more. I think they do. I think they have benefited the most from both the tax cuts over the last 10 years and also from this great American system that we have that their taxes help to pay for. You know, uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes said taxes are what we pay for civilization. It's a moral thing. It's a patriotic thing. But look, I, I do want to address this issue that if you would, you know, take all their money, it wouldn't, it wouldn't balance the budget. Well, that's, first of all, nobody's proposing that. We're talking about very, very small tax increases on those folks. And second, no single thing that we could possibly okay, propose let me, let me does, interrupt you, does Enough. Hang on. Sure. I mean, because this it, it, is an interesting yeah, point. We're yeah. talking math here. And, Michael, if yes, it doesn't really make a difference in the actual no, 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 overall to, scheme uh, of on. things. I didn't say, no, no, no. I didn't say it didn't make a difference. I said it doesn't solve the problem all by itself. Getting rid of Social Security all, doesn't balance the budget. Getting rid of Medicare doesn't balance the budget. If you do these things by themselves, you know, they, they don't balance the budget. And they are built, getting rid of Social Security is ridiculous. Taxing every penny that millionaires make is ridiculous. We're talking about small tax increases and reasonable changes in spending programs. You put them together, you do control the deficit, and the rich do need to pay in. They have paid less and less in taxes as a share of their income over the last 15 years, even as their incomes have gone up and up and up. How much of the government's money should uh, America's millionaires be able to keep then? I mean, honestly, <laughs> what, do you, what do you feel is fair? Uh, as far as the money you earn, how much do you think you should be able to take home from that? I think I think that it would be fair if we went back to the same amount of taxation we had on, in the 1990s. In the mid 1990s, the, the richest one percent of Americans were paying about 35, 37 percent of their income in tax in federal taxes, and now it's down to well under 30 percent. Even as their incomes have almost doubled, right. so it, we're not talking about 50 percent or 60 percent. And I recognize it's a lot, but don't forget these folks have a lot of money. You know what? Even if you, if you could keep it there, I bet you Dan would have no problem with that. Yeah. Dan, weighing on that, he just said, I, these folks have a lot of money. Is it their fault that they have a lot of money? Nobody Did they work fault. hard? To, so said, then why do you want to take it? It's not a punishment. It's, it's, Michael, it's, Michael, <laughs> please, please. I, I'm sorry for talking while you're interrupting, but I want to get a point in here. You should apologize. <laughs> Michael actually made an interesting concession. He says he wants to go back to the 1990s with a top tax rate of 39.6%. Well, we've had this same fight before in our television interviews, and I've told him, I'll take that deal. 
deal if he's willing to go back to the Bill Clinton levels of spending when yeah, the federal it. government only consumed 18.2% okay, so of GDP. To, so if we dramatically reduce the burden of government, take away all the wasteful spending of the yeah. Bush-Obama years, then yes, maybe it might be reasonable to have it go back to Clinton's taxes. And, but and no a lot of people about that. A lot of people would say, Michael, I mean, the, the issue of raising yeah. taxes is just sort of a spiteful class warfare one. The real no, problem, of course, is it's spending. Not, it's, so it's would no you go more, back? No, hold on, hold on a second. Pause. It's not. It's no more class warfare than tax cuts for the rich were class warfare. If we're reversing Bush tax cuts, which weren't class warfare, how is that now class warfare? Look, nobody is saying that you need to pay taxes because it's a punishment. We're it's just a non-issue. We it's the spending that's American the real system. problem, Michael. Is the spending that's, that's the real. Right. If you want to go back to no, 40 percent, okay, I tax, think you could have hold that. Hold on. We are a low tax. We are a low tax country. We are fifth from the bottom among de economically developed countries as a sh in terms of total tax revenue as a share of GDP. No, that's fifth we from are the top, not from the bottom. Uh, I pay as much here bottom. in New York fifth as I did when I lived in Berlin, which is that, bordering on socialism, we, we are, right? So we are. Uh, you, you look. You probably uh, look, get more this for your money you in talk, Berlin. You want to talk math? One you of the reasons for that. Guys, you want to talk math? Let me bring in Steve here. Matt, one of the reasons for that is you're paying New York State and New York City taxes. Hang on, hang on. All right, Steve, go ahead. I'm just saying that one of the reasons, Matt, you're paying more is you're paying New York State and New York City taxes, which people talk about the Clinton years. The East Coast and the West Coast states have gone from much lower marginal tax rates to 10, California now 13 percent. And I never hear the guys talking about, you know, soak the rich, talking about the total tax rate that the rich are paying when you start adding in you are getting close to 50% of people's income, which is a and pretty high number. And is there something number. wrong with that? Is there something wrong, Dan Mitchell, when you're looking at 50% <laughs> of someone's total income? Well, here's what I think Let me we're guess going to Dan's see in California. Say yes. We're going to see just guess. entrepreneurs, <laughs> investors, small business owners leaving California. And I say, let's keep taxes where they are for a couple of years, and let's see how these experiments in California and France work out, because we're <laughs> going to see it's not going to work. But the most important thing, and this is what, where I would love to pin my down. I'm trying. All we have to do to balance the budget over the next 10 years is to limit the growth of federal spending so it grows 2.5 percent a year. All this debate in Washington about trying to rape and pillage the rich, it's all designed so that politicians can increase spending at an even faster rate. And what's going to happen when you put that blood in the water with hungry sharks? They're going to increase spending even more on top let, of let that. Me, let yeah. me ask that another problem. question of fairness over to sure. you, Michael. Um, sure. You've got basically a situation in which half the country is is paying no federal income tax at all. Do you think it's appropriate, it's right for Do more you, people to yeah, have a little more you, skin in the game? Sure. Let me ask you a question. What percentage of total federal revenue is federal income taxes? I, I think our point is, do you think people should have skin in the no, game? No, hold on a second. That, that, that was a question. Yeah, I understand that's the question, but don't you think you need to know what the whole game is? Federal income taxes are only 40% of all federal revenue. And I know where you're going with this. I know you revenue. want to talk about so, sales taxes. I know you want to talk about all, all the other. And, and payroll, granted, payroll taxes, right, all of these things matter, but almost federal as big. income taxes Total are what we're debating taxes. here. Let, let's stick to uh, what we're I'm talking sorry, about. I thought we were talking about taxation. We're talking about, we're talking about whether federal taxes should go up and who they should go up for. You Pay, want them to go up for people are, that are making a lot of money. I'm asking you, if you've got half the population that's not paying any federal income tax, should it, and, and when we I'm talk saying, about issues of fairness, and should I'm they saying, be paying a little saying, bit more? And what I'm saying is they are paying federal taxes. The, the, the distinction between federal income taxes and federal payroll taxes and federal sales taxes and federal corporate taxes and state and local taxes is a false distinction. You're picking, I could just as easily say, wow, there are a lot of millionaires not paying any payroll taxes. Is that fair? Not paying any payroll taxes. Mitt Romney paid almost no payroll taxes. That's totally, he's a moocher. That's unfair. Well, no, he's paying income taxes. There's other kinds of taxes. And when you're focusing just on federal income tax, you are, I don't know, deliberately or just misleadingly showing people a misleading picture of the of the pie. There's more than just federal income taxes. I, I, I actually want to jump in and support Michael here. Thank I you, agree. Dan. Thank I you, agree Dan. that payroll taxes also are a problem. We should be lowering <laughs> all taxes and reducing the overall burden of government spending. Why? Because we want more growth and prosperity and becoming more like France is not a good idea, even though Michael's misguided on that area. But Michael, would Nobody's you would you agree like that, would you agree, Michael, that it's more, it's more important to have a discussion about spending really than taxes? I mean, 
I, if, I think they, they look. They need to be. They need to be had together. Look, if you look yeah. at CBO projections, the entire reason that we have a projected budget over the uh, projected budget deficit, or nearly the entire reason over the next ten years, is because yeah. of the Bush tax cuts. All right, we're gonna have that's to just, leave it there, guys. We're gonna have to leave it that's there. But I am gonna make a proposal. I would.